ignoring my heart, which was beating with nervousness and fear, I ran from the gym to the backyard. This is taking me further from the dorm, but I have no choice. There's no one in the backyard. Hiding under the eaves will allow me to stay relatively safe should someone attack me from above. I was making my way, anticipating a threat coming from behind. It's not likely she'll use a gun. Surprise, supposing her goal is to make my murder look like a suicide, she's not going to leave behind any evidence. And if she comes to the backyard after seeing me run away, I can still escape if I stay away from her. One way or another, something will happen before the night falls. In the event she, that I get dragged away from the darkness now, she's the one in danger when I spill the beans. She wouldn't be relentlessly attacking me otherwise. It's just a matter of who gives in first. Time was slowly passing by. Was I wrong? Did she give up? My breathing went back to normal, but my pulse was still racing with fear. I thought, I feel thirsty. By this time, school is already closed, so it's not often that someone comes out here this late at night. Is it okay to go back to the dorm? There's a quiet thump coming from somewhere behind. I scurried off to an open location. Power poles on the other side were making a screeching sound. Huh? One by one, they started tumbling down. They did so in the opposite direction from me, so I could only watch the incident in disbelief. I heard it sound like the one produced by ground vibrations. I had a bra bad pre premonition docked. The fuck? Before I knew it, a high voltage cable came swinging down on me like a whip. It fell all the way around me, causing a short circuit. So that was her plan. I had no idea how she could control the cables, but they actually assaulted me at once. Whoa. I barely managed to avoid the attack, but they coiled closer around me after re rebounding. An exposed cable was drawing in on me. Here it goes. I mustered whatever energy I had left and struck the cable with my metal bat, uh, changing its course. Whoa. I immediately dropped down to the ground. Avoiding the bare part of the cable in the nick of time. When uh, I was about to regain my balance, another cable came from the side. I used my bat to fight it back. This is bad. I took cover behind an object. A light touch on my arm caused a burning sensation. I quickly stepped aside after seeing that piece of cable or conduct that pieces of cable were conducting electricity through the storeroom. All around me were cable pieces swarming like a bunch of snakes. All of them were still, but all of them were still, ba ba but all of them were still, better run away. From the corner of my eye, I saw something flying my way from the side. Swung my bat with all my might, but I missed the projectile. Wow. The thing exploded and a cold sensation washed over my body. What the heck is going on? Something round was floating, flung at me from the shadow. A water balloon? Moreover, I could taste salt in the water that had gotten into my mouth. Oh good, she's going to literally electrocute me to death. God damn it. Water improves electrical conductivity, and salt water especially so. I almost felt respect for her thoroughness. A bunch of water balloons exploded, leaving behind puddles of water all over. This I wouldn't have anywhere to run. Calm down and think. How to stop the electricity. Suddenly, my eyes caught a glimpse of the fallen pole, and this sparked an idea in my head. This was the best I could think of. I didn't know if it would work, but what else could I do? I lifted my bat high. My aim was the cable coming from the transformer. If I could smash that thing. Take that. With a cry, I swung my bat down. A huge noise of, uh, of collision, followed by complete silence. That should do it. After making my mind, I started running. The electricity had stopped. I kept running as fast as I could all the way to the dorm. Why are you in my room? She said to me. In my room? I almost thought I got to the wrong room, but there could be no other room filled with all sorts of training equipment. I shut the door and contemplated whether to run away again. 
安心してもう私はあなたを殺さないわ。Cool, that means we can start dating. Can I really believe that? I didn't feel I could trust her. あなたはサンド、私の罠をかいくぐり、生き抜いてみせた。Twice I was lucky enough to be saved by my friends. 偶然であっても、それもあなたの力だと思うわ。そういう星のもとに生まれてきたのよ。あなたはきっと、なかなか死なないのよ。Yay! This keeps up one of these dates I will. ちなみに、私は一度しくじっても、二度目をしくじることはなかったわ。I shuddered. Does she mean she's killed someone before? Kedo, Yatsura Kara Ningiru no Muzukashi. Karela, Anata that's near Niena. Yamini Nagirete Yuka. Demon, eh? Atasni da Kiva Nier. Great. Karela, does Nuk Kota Dekirin. What are you getting at? Teo Kumana. Yeah. She said with a grin on her face. With you who tried to kill me. Sinana Katazana. I was lucky to survive. Does she only think of herself? Uh, no, I don't want to be kidnapped. Thoughts were racing through my head. Actually, didn't they threaten to take Rin hostage if Kiyosuke took action? Then there was this girl, Tokido, asking for my assistance. Taking all this into account, wasn't it obvious I should join hands with her? If I was to fight with the unidentified, if I was to fight with the unidentified enemy, okay. I said grudgingly and hold, nodding my head. It's my fault I sneaked into the school at night. I brought this on myself. Same. We shook hands. I want you to tell me everything. Who you are, who the darkness executives are, and what your respective goals are, and a little bit about yourself. I would, I would like to know about you. I'm only interested in your goal. Hidden treasure? Is there a chest of gold buried somewhere in the school? So, you were roaming the school at night looking for that? Sounds like fiction. Is she really a spy, and is there a treasure lying somewhere under the school? I had a hard time believing her story. Then it is in fact that she attempted to kill me. She was serious about it all three times. Meaning what she says should be true, at least to her. Who exactly is this revolutionary treasure? She repeated. That's fair. What? There are others? So, I Hmm. Things uh, just got more, even more implausible. Enough about others. Tell me more about the darkness executives. Are you point they secretly protect the hidden treasure as well? Are they a human? So they're not human. I had a conversation with them, possibly a small shadow. Yeah. How did it get inside that tiny shadow? This is simply supernatural. She tossed her hair back, leaving a pleasant fragrance. I don't think that's even remotely similar at all. They asked me about you. I kept my lips sealed, though. They told me to keep my mouth shut. I wanted to ask Yosuke for her advice more than anything else, but I couldn't. An old friend of mine. 
How should I put it? To me, he's like a superhuman. An incredible person. <laughs> That's why it was so bad that I couldn't get, the, get it. There'd be nothing to fear if I, only I could get Kyosuke on my side. But then Ren, oh, she's Kyosuke's sister. She'll be in danger. I panicked. I think that's not helpful. Not that you knew him anyways. Yeah, thank you. I felt happy that she turned out to be a reasonable person once we joined forces. Yeah. I got the gist of it. She didn't, didn't she call me a moment ago? Riki Naoi. I like that too. I don't mind whatever you call me. She took out a gun and handed it to me. Fuck yeah! Sorry. Oh yeah, I am. Finally. Hold on. I shrunk back from her. I won't be going around with that thing. God, she's so fucking cute. Collect information or something. I can look for information on how to enter the underground. Yeah. It was in the classroom, huh? でも、them away. I have to shoot them? Right, but... Right, but... Right, how? Besides the wind, because the window will shatter. So. I looked at the gun. It's not a fake. This gun's a, the real deal. Isn't it better if I test it first? Hmm? She looked behind me. This reminded me of something. Masato, where's my roommate? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we should. How about we go to your room instead? I sensed a faintly pleasant odor again. She's great. I love her already. I'm already really enjoying her. God damn it. Yeah. A shadow approached. It had a school uniform on. An eerie creature with pitch black hands and a face expressing nothing. It said. He's clearly making fun of me. Riki-kun, shoot! Oh, okay. I obediently pointed the gun at the thing. And yet hesitated. What the thing's really a person? Does it look like a fucking person? What if the gun is capable of killing? I'll become a murderer. I remain still, gripping the gun. The sound came from nearby. The next moment, the school uniform fell flat on the ground. The thing that wore it had vanished. Tokido put the gun down. She had more than one gun. She started walking. I turned back after catching up with her and found that even the uniform had disappeared. Have you been hiding your face all this time? You don't have to anymore? What was it? What? Is this the same world I used to live in until yesterday? I felt how I was getting farther and farther away, getting farther away from my happy, carefree life. What the fuck is going on? While making my way through the hallway, I couldn't help but worry about one of them attacking me again. I just had to fire my gun the way she did before. There's no, they're nothing more than shadows. No one will die. I tried to convince myself. She stopped after walking all the way to the end of the hallway. Is the door really here? 
Didn't she pull it off so effortlessly? What am I afraid of? I'm afraid of becoming a murderer. In the corner of my eye, I still thought of the whole thing as some silly prank. I can do it. No, I will do it. I said with bravado, not wanting to appear weaker than a girl. She's a well-trained spy, though, not just any ordinary girl. And she's cute. Okay, I got it. She clapped me on the shoulder and went inside. I was left by myself. Why is this happening to me? My peaceful days. When I wake up in my bed and everything would be back, in no back to normal. That's how to work Yana is breathing the only thing piercing the silence. Or over. My hands jerked from the recoil. It didn't prevent me from hitting the target somewhere around the shoulder. A human shaped shadow just like one the one before dispersed. It's okay, it's no real person. I was so nervous, my shirt soaked with sweat and clung to my body. Finally, the door opened and Tokido came through. I lost a count of how many times I fired the gun. I handed my gun to her. How did it go? Find anything? What was it like? Some kind of switch? Sounds suspicious. Yeah, I can do much better when I don't have to fear being attacked. I went inside the classroom, leaving Tokido behind. I still held my gun in my hand. How would I explain this if I was caught by police? I'm already breaking the law by holding this gun. This must be what she talked about. I would never notice that floor tile sank a little if she hadn't told me. I went around pressing all the tiles in the room. The ones in the center required more strength to press than those at the rear. This is the tendency... There was this tendency working up from the center toward the edge. I didn't notice that she was standing behind me. What's that? I turned around. She had something like a worn out piece of cloth in her hands. Royal tomb? So. When I heard royal tomb, the first thing that came to mind is ancient Egypt. Things just look took an, an even stranger turn. However, there ought to be some secret to this in this classroom. What with the quirky floor and everything. Think. I tried to imagine. Edges of the room required the same strength to sink. The closer you get to the center, the more pressure is required. How do you go about leveling the floor? I gazed at the thing and I envisioned inside the classroom. It was... A Lawson? <laughs> what? Tower of the Sun, a pyramid. Tower of the Sun, I guess? Wait, what was it? Uh, the edges of the room required the same strength to sink. More pressure is required. Pyramid? It's a pyramid. We'll, we'll need almost twice as much, many chairs and desks or as are in this classroom. Give me a hand. I head out to the classroom next door. The two of us brought chairs and desks from there. <laughs> We're going to put desks and chairs together and build a pyramid covering all the area in the classroom. I'm not enthused either. You should have paired up with some th someone more physically fit. Oh, I have plenty of things I want to do to you. After moving the last desk and chair, I heard a clicking sound. You did it. Oh, there's a lot of things special about me. Did you figure out where the entrance is? 
Tokido walked to the blackboard and pulled it up using both of her hands. There's a hole in the concrete wall, just large enough for one person to crawl into. It was totally dark inside. I couldn't imagine myself crawling inside that thing. Oh yeah. You go first. No particular reason. Me too. I feel like quitting. <laughs> Wait, I'll do it. I don't even mind going first. I agree. I felt relieved. I'm going to be right up on you. She stepped inside the darkness with nothing to light the path. She's so brave. I followed her. All of a sudden, she stopped and I bumped into that. That, or as I would guess, her butt. Don't stop without a warning. I, I can multitask. How about you warn me before you stop? Great, but why did he stop? Yeah, okay. I started to back away. Hey, Tokido, what? I jerked my head, up, shoving my nose into that. That obviously being her skirt. Damn, Riki, you, you really want to... So bold, Riki. Oh, and do you hate me doing this kind of stuff with you? Sorry. Uh, I like being in there. Yeah. I crawled back and trying to keep my head as low as possible. I got out of the hole. Tokita suddenly shook off the dust off her skirt. <laughs> she shot me a glare. I'm sorry. I could only apologize. Yeah. She started talking about evident uh, after evidently regaining her composure. I guess she turned on the lights for an instant uh, for an instant to be able to speak in such detail. What are we gonna do? Okay, see you tomorrow. Uh, I said in a sulky voice. I was hoping to get it over with tonight. Oh, well, this is so sudden. I don't know what I should even be doing tomorrow. What am I supposed to do about finding members for the baseball team? Besides, they threatened to capture one of my childhood friends if I speak to anyone. Maybe she's in danger even now. You're the best. Okay. Of course I am. Huh? Yeah. Mm. Tokido smiled. Hope that uh, you end up getting someone you care about. She described our relationship precisely. Right. I nodded in a sense. Did he sound a bit? Even impromptu partners? She looks so much more uh, grown up than me when she made that promise. She was smaller than me, yet spoke the words with emphasis and strength. Sweet. I always love being called by you. Beautiful girl. She said and walked off. This is bad. Is that oh it's the shadow dude right in the fucking corner right there. Oh. Me neither. What? Oh, 
You mean the fire of the gun in broad daylight? But can you really do it? If you're so sure of yourself, it definitely is. I'll do it. I reluctantly agreed. It was too creepy to pretend it wasn't there. I pointed my gun behind the desk and pulled the trigger. And so the night went on. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, a little. No, I need to go to class. God damn, it, no way, that's creepy. No, I don't need that. I'm fine. Huh? The bulletin board in front of the dorm. It was a complete mess as usual, but there was a bright red paper that stood out. This presence. I can't help but take interest. I took the scarlet paper that was under the notice of new Kendo members bounce practice poster. Hmm. Oh, it was folded up. When I opened it? The paper in my hand simply read, I'll be waiting in the backyard during break. T. This is from Tokido. Nonda Riki. Oh, it's nothing. Fucking wish. What? No way. No. Ah, Masato. Masato peeked into my hand and suddenly yanked part of the paper out. Masato and Kengo both peeked at it. I'm fucking nuts. What? I'm nuts. No, that's okay. Sure, you just want to get in on it. Yeah, I promise. You aren't leaving me much choice. I looked at the paper as I answered. It really was plain white paper. There's definitely words written on it, so why did they disappear? It's probably some trick that Tokido used. At any rate, I can ask her when I meet her during the next break. 